Hi, and welcome to another dose of virtual vitamin Z. My name is Stephen, and I'm the curator of humane education for the Detroit Zoological Society. And today's episode is called Squirrel Talk. And in this episode, we are going to be learning all about squirrels. And one of the ways we're going to do that is I'm going to take you on a virtual squirrel walk at the Detroit Zoo. And then I'm going to introduce you to a game you can play that will allow you to take on the role of a squirrel preparing for winter. And then finally, I will share an action that you can take that will help squirrels and other animals while also giving you a chance to continue building your empathy for them. So, to get started, I want to share my squirrel walk with you. So as I was going out and going for a walk today at the Detroit Zoo, I wanted to know what are the squirrels at the Detroit Zoo up to? And maybe you're curious, maybe you're sitting at home thinking, you know what, I kind of want to know that too. And if you are, you're in luck because I have some answers for you. So I went for a walk and shortly after I got outside of the Ford Education Center, I saw this Eastern gray squirrel standing by this fence here. And I tried to be as patient as I could and wait to see what the squirrel was up to. But eventually I got a little impatient and tried to get a little bit closer. And that squirrel decided that it was time to go under that fence and find somewhere else. I got a little bit closer to this squirrel here. This was on the Western part of the zoo. And it looked like this squirrel was maybe eating something, maybe digging something. And I tried to get a little bit closer too, but as soon as I did, the squirrel saw me and ran away. And it turns out there was actually a second squirrel hiding there. Now this squirrel, I had a little bit more luck with. I was able to get pretty close to this squirrel. But when I did get closer to this squirrel, you can see that he started wagging his tail like that. And it didn't seem like a playful wag. It seemed like he was trying to communicate something to me. So that gave me a bit of a better idea that whatever these squirrels are doing, it's something that is very important to them and something that they don't want to be interrupted as they're doing it. A little bit later, I saw this squirrel. And as you can see, this squirrel appears to be eating from a, a seed pod or a bean pod. And once that squirrel left, I went over and started to investigate what the squirrel had been eating. And as you can see, it looked like they were pulling seeds out of it. And that reminded me of something. Earlier this month, I had been walking around the zoo looking for acorns. I would look for an oak tree, and then I would look for acorns under the oak tree. And I went and I found an oak tree and I looked around on the ground under it. I knew it was an oak tree because of those leaves. But rather than seeing acorns, I would just see the acorn caps. And that made me really curious because I know that squirrels like to eat. And I know that there are a lot of squirrels at the zoo, but there aren't enough for them to eat all of these acorns. So they must be doing something else with the acorns too. And as you can see, this squirrel seems to be doing something else. And I went over and investigated here and I found another clue. And this other clue was that I saw that there were some dig marks in the ground near where that squirrel had been. Now, this is a chipmunk. This isn't a squirrel. But as I was on my walk, I saw this. And I thought the footage was just too cool to not share it with you. As you can see, this chipmunk is standing on a branch in a tree and eating these berries from the tree. And again, once he saw what I was doing, he ran away. So before I move on to the game, I want to talk a little bit more about what I found out about these squirrels. So I found out that they were eating, but I was also curious because it seemed like there were a lot of acorns and other food items missing from the zoo. So I did some research and I found out some really interesting things about squirrels. One of those things was that squirrels prepare for winter, not just by eating a lot of food in the fall, but also by storing or caching food so that they can go to it during the winter. And that was pretty cool to me. But there were a couple things that stood out even more. One of those things was how important caching food and having this safe and reliable food supply is to squirrels. Now, 
as you probably saw from that footage, the squirrels didn't really like it when I walked over and started observing them. And they don't like it when other squirrels do that either. In fact, there are a couple of things that a squirrel might do if that squirrel knows that she's being watched by another squirrel or a person. One of those things is they might just run away. But if they do stay, they might then go back and dig up and rebury some of the food they had buried if they were seen burying it. Another really cool thing is that sometimes they will actually pretend to bury food in one place if they know they're being watched and then go and bury the actual food somewhere else. And this is a sign of how important it is to these squirrels to have this reliable and safe food supply so that they can survive and thrive through the winter. Another really cool thing about squirrels is that they're really good at remembering where they buried this food. They have an exceptional memory that allows them to go to an area and know exactly where all of the different food caches are in that area. So that's pretty cool too. And that leads me to our game. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again and introduce you to the game. Now I just call this game the squirrel game and here's how you play it. I have another video for you. So the first thing you're gonna to want to do is you are going to want to find a friend. So in this case, I found a plush squirrel and this plush squirrel was my friend to demonstrate the game with. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is find an open space to play in. So here's an example of a nice open space that you could play this game in. The third thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to find some natural item to use as food. So in this case, I'm using these dried leaves and that item should be abundant enough that it's not too difficult to find it. You wanna make sure you're not using something another animal needs more though. So you wouldn't wanna use real acorns. The next thing you're gonna do is find a place to hide your food like under this pine tree. And then you're gonna hide your food in that place. But remember, you're playing with somebody else. So you're also gonna to try to find where your friend hid their food, like you can see this plush squirrel I was playing with found where I hid my food. Now the last thing is just like that squirrel uh, was wagging his tail at me to let me know to go away, if you see your friend trying to steal your food, you can point at them and say, hey, go away from my food. So this is a game that does, I think, a few things. One of the things that the game accomplishes is that it gives you a chance to get outside and use natural materials to get some exercise and have some fun. But another thing it does from the perspective of humane education is it gives you an opportunity to take on the role of a squirrel. And taking on the role of other animals is one of six best practices in building empathy for those other animals. So by taking on the role of a squirrel and pretending to be a squirrel preparing for winter, we might gain a better understanding of how important these food supplies are to squirrels and understand why squirrels might be either wagging their tail or maybe even vocalizing to tell us to go away. And that helps us understand, okay, if I wanna coexist with these squirrels, maybe I should step away right now. So I hope that you enjoy doing that game. One last thing though, I want to share an action that we can take to further build our empathy for squirrels. And that action is that we can learn how to preserve food, take a lesson from squirrels. Now we know that squirrels um, to prepare for winter will bury food that they've gathered in the fall. Now humans, we might not think of humans as needing to do the same thing because we might be used to being able to go to a grocery store and getting an apple or corn or something like that whenever we want. But if you think about trying to live sustainably and live locally, you might recognize that, especially here in Michigan, certain foods don't grow year round. We're not able to get apples or corn year round. And we might wanna think about how can we preserve food in the fall so that we can have that food in the winter. And fortunately, there are a lot of great resources out there to help us do just that. 
One of those resources is this web page here for the National Center for Home Food Preservation. And to learn more about what this has to offer, we can click on this link at the bottom of the page and it'll take us to the page. And one of the things that this does a great job of is on the left side of the screen here, you can see that it lists many different ways that we can preserve food for the winter. We can can it, freeze it, dry it, cure and smoke it, ferment it, pickle it, make jam and jelly. And then if you choose one of those and you wanna learn more about it, you can click on it for even more resources. So let's say I wanna learn how to pickle. So I can click on general information and this will give me some examples of how I can use products like vinegar to preserve foods like cucumbers. So as I said, this is a great way to continue building empathy for squirrels by learning from them and continuing to kind of mimic their behaviors to learn more about them and how they live in the world. At the same time though, I said it's also a great way to live more sustainably because if you think about it, when we want to eat certain foods in the winter that don't grow in our local area, they have to come from somewhere. And that transportation can use, among other resources, a lot of energy. So if we start learning how we can preserve some of our favorite foods in the fall to have them in the winter, that's one way that we can live more locally and walk more softly. And so speaking of walking softly, today's episode is brought to you by, of course, the Detroit Zoological Society and also the Detroit Zoological Society's Berman Academy for Humane Education. And I hope that you've been able to see how by learning more about squirrels, by going on a virtual walk, by playing this game, by learning how to preserve food, we can not only learn about and build our empathy for other animals, but also learn actions we can take to help them thrive and um, thrive with us, and we can help coexist with them. So I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you're interested in more doses of virtual vitamin Z, be sure to check out our website at DetroitZoo.org, click on the education tab, and then click on the link for virtual vitamin Z lessons. Until then, stay safe and have a great day. Bye.